Yeah, today I'm going to defend link game theory and machine learning in theories and applications. Here is the outline of my dissertation defense presentation. I will first briefly introduce the background of game theory and machine learning. Then I will show how we link game theory with machine learning to overcome the challenges in the correlated equilibrium solution concept. Next, I will show how we solve the edge caching resource allocation problem in mobile social networks, which involve the matching game and the machine learning technique. And next is the work regarding the first arrival picking through, through the deep learning with human interactive learning technique. And then uh, is the future work and finally the conclusion. Game theory is a study of mathematical models of strategic interaction among rational decision makers. It has application in all fields of social science, as well as in logic, system science, and computer science. Originally, it addressed zero-sum games in which each participant's gain or loss are exactly balanced by those of the other participants. Today, game theory applied to a wide range behavior relations and is now an umbrella term for the science of logic, logical decision making in humans, animals, and computers. When we talk about game theory, it's very intuitive to think with a classic board game. To study the rationality of the decision making, we first need to understand what are the key elements in that driving the game. First, the player, who are the decision maker. Next, the decision is what a player can make in a game. And the payoff is what motivates the players making certain decision. And the strategy determines what a player will do in the game. Finally, it's the type of game that the player are playing. With all of these key elements, we can now study the rationality among the player in a game. Although the development of the game theory started way back in 1930s, today there are still many researchers exploring to the human rationality in different applications, such as board game, video game, sports, human relations, economy, and more. On the other hand, machine learning is a study of computer algorithms that provides systems the ability to automatically learn and improve from experience without being explicitly programmed. Machine learning technique was proposed in 1956 uh, by John McCarthy. However, this technique wasn't well recognized until early first century. When he first proposed the idea of artificial intelligence, people were interested in this brand new thought. However, at the time, this idea was unrealistic for researchers due to the com complication of real world problem and hardware limitation. In 1970s to 1980s, Edward Fekmanbaum developed the expert system which gave rebirth to the artificial intelligence. However, the hardware and the data collection were still not reach, reaching the need of the machine learning technique, the result wasn't ideal enough to be applied into applications. Fortunately, in for early for 21st century, the hardware development grows rapidly, such as multi-core CPU, high-capacity RAM, GPU, and more. And this is when researchers start to recognize the potential of machine learning technique. Today, machine learning has been applied into many different areas, such as face recognition, product recommendation, self-drive card, virtual assistance, email filtering, and more. From this application, we can see the robustness of machine learning technique in mining the data to improve our living quality. From above introduction on the study of both game theory and machine learning, it seems that there is not much connection between each field, where game theory is to study the congenital action of human and machine learning is mining the data po post -pro processed by human. However, many existing work in game theory rely on certain strict, strict assumptions, which might not be practical in real life. 
Here we say it is, it is not practical. It's due to the fact that humans are not yet be able to represent in a mathematical way. However, machine learning seems to be robust in this matter. If we can link game theory with machine learning in theories and applications, we might find out many interesting things from it. And this is what motivates us to research in this direction. Now we first look at the work we overcome uh, where we overcome the challenge in correlated equilibrium solution concept in game theory by using the deep policy-based reinforcement learning model we propose. We first look at non-cooperative game. In the non-cooperative game, the issue being that the players are greedy, which means they only care about themselves when making decisions. Moreover, no one in, game, in the game is willing to share their information about their payoff, since it might harm their performance due to other players. To achieve an equilibrium that's satisfied by all players, the solution is to use the mixed strategy in the Nash equilibrium solution concept. With, uh, the idea in the mixed strategy is that each player's strategy, SI, is the probability distribution over the decisions they have. This means there will be more than one decision to be made with positive probability. Let all strategies for player I to be the set capital SI and the strategy profiles capital S is equal to the Cartesian product of the strategies of all players. In Nash equilibrium solution concept, which proposed by John Nash, the Utility of player is calculated as shown here, which is the sum of the payoff associated with the decisions the player make and the probability of that strategy set. Since this is a non-cooperative game, player will only consider their own utility. Hence, the best response for player I is making the decision that has the highest utility under the strategy profiles as S minus I. The strategy profile S is a Nash equilibrium if and only if player is playing their best response. Take the classic game chicken of chicken, for example, showing on the top right. The yellow area in the figure is the, is the calculate utility by playing the mixed strategy for both, for both of the players. With a Nash equilibrium definition, we can see in that figure on the right that the utility of the equilibrium is bounded in the green area, which is the Nash equilibrium convex hull. And this is how John Nash came up with the famous theorem. Every finite game has a Nash equilibrium. And this is one of the reasons that he has been rewarded the Nobel Prize. Although mixed strategy can lead player to a Nash equilibrium, we can see that there is still a part of utility that is not in the Nash equilibrium convex hull, but have, have higher value than the utility that are in the convex hull. This is due to the property of the mixed strategy where all decision with positive probability will be played. To reach outside of the Nash equilibrium convex hull, another famous Nobel Prize winning mathematician, Robert Allman proposed a correlated strategy where the players could reach an, equal, an equilibrium outside of Nash equilibrium convex hull, which he called it the correlated equilibrium. In correlated equilibrium solution concept, player will choose their decision according to the decision set capital DH. Player will observe a public signal which is the probability distribution among all the decision sets. The probability decisions, uh, uh, probability distribution is a correlated equilibrium if it satisfies the condition shown here, which is similar as the Nash equilibrium, but the action becomes the actions described in the decision set. The figure on the right shows the correlated equilibrium convex hull in the game of chicken. Compared to the Nash equilibrium, we can see that the area is wider than Nash equilibrium convex hull. 
even though the correlated strategy could lead player to a correlated, correlated equilibrium, the problem in this solution concept is the design of the public signal. We have to know that the payoff vector of each player are pr private information. However, based on the correlated equilibrium definition, without knowing the pay player's payoff vector, it is not possible to calculate the public signal. Hence, it is not possible to determine the correlated equilibrium in this way. And this is why we propose a policy-based deep reinforcement learning model to overcome this challenge. In our system model, there are some key elements we need to define first. First is the player. In our system model, there are a total of i players. Each player has its own play payoff vector. The game environment has different states, which is, probability dis which is the probability distribution over the decision set. The action each player can perform is either increase, decrease, or make no change on each of the probability and the probability distribution based on their policy. After making an action, the player will be brought to another state. Here is a flow chart of our proposed method. Each player will go through this process on their own. Let's assume we are in the player one's point of view to go over this process. This means at this point, we only know player one's payoff vector. We first check whether there is any other players with unknown payoff vector. If yes, we set the player to P uh, we set the player p man to the play to be player p one, and from the players with unknown payoff vector, we find all the players that has multiple Nash equilibrium equilibria with the main player, and place them into the set p against. When two player has multiple Nash equilibrium, this means that their payoff vector has a monotonously increased property in different direction. We will discuss this in, uh, we will discuss why this is important in the later slides. We will say these players are against to the main player and the rest of the other players, players are cooperating with the main player. We then randomly select one player from the set P against and let the select player and the main player to interact with the environment. Both of the player will use their own policy-based deep reinforcement learning model to interact with the environment. They will keep interacting with the environment and updating their own network until the final state is stable. When the final state is stable, it means they have reached the correlated equilibrium. With this equilibrium state, the main player will go ahead to estimate the opponent's payoff vector by a mathematical model we propose. Then we will remove the opponent from the set P against. Then we check whether the set P against is empty. If it's not empty, we will repeat the process from choosing a player from the set P against. If, the, uh, if it's empty, we will check whether there is player that their payoff vector is unknown. And if so, we will randomly choose a player in the previous P against set to be the main player and repeat the process. And if not, this means we uh, all player, uh, uh, this means that we know all the player's behavior and the process determinated. Deter Here is an overview of the basic policy based reinforcement learning model looks like where each player has their own deep neural network to determine the policy based on the state they observe and output a, a policy due to sample and action. The player will interact with the environment with this action and the environment will send a reward feedback to the player and bring the player to another state and the neural network will update through the process. And keep in mind that there are, will be two players interacting with the environment at the same time. Hence, each player will have, 
have to discover the environment and learn the behavior of other players at the same time. Here is a structure of our proposed policy-based deep reinforcement learning neural network. Here, the network has two inputs, the current state and the previous state. The first part of the net network is for data recognition, where the network first determines what is in the input data. Next part is to determine the relationship between both input data. And the next part is to analyze the joint distribution between the player and, the and followed by an output layer where the output is the probability distribution over the action and the, of the player. Finally, the last one is the network optimization part where lo the loss function is a log loss with weight and the network will be optimized by the atom optimizer. In our system model, the player will always start from fix, a fixed state. From this state, the player will perform n minus one actions and I'll preserve n states for a total of m rounds. During the interaction, the player will record the number j for each action they, loop they took and the state they observe, where the number j will be one hot encoded into a vector. In our, uh, once we have collect the data, we will calculate the re reward of, for the log loss function for updating the networks. As mentioned before, there will be two player interact with the environment at the same time. The reason we let each of the player to interact with the environment individually is to let them have the ability to discover more about the environment. However, each action a player performs is actually affected by the other. Therefore, the state they actually should be on is at the middle of, at the, middle of the state they each observe. Hence, the reward is calculated using the average state as hat of each action. We then multiply the reward by discount, by discount vector gamma to the power of capital N minus N. This is due to the difference, uh, different import, importance of each action the player will perform. We can think this action as a time series data where the longer time horizon have, have much more variance as they in, include more irrelevant information in it. With this discount back factor, we can uh, reduce the variance in the data. Next, we subtract the reward by the mean and divide by the standard deviation. This mean is considered as a bias or a baseline of the reward. Since in ideally, each action should be able to increase its probability. However, the player's action, uh, the player is actually choosing an action by sampling based on their policy. This means some of the action might be rarely sampled. If the reward is always positive, this means the probability of the action being sample will be increased and the, and the rarely sample action will decrease. But it doesn't mean the rarely sample action is a bad action. Hence, we need to subtract, the bias to, by, subtract a bias to make the reward have positive, positive and negative values. And dividing the reward by the standard deviation is to normalize the data. Once the final state is stable, the player will reach the correlated equilibrium. With this probability distribution, we then estimate the opponent's payout vector by our proposed mathematical model that adopts the idea of the force of tension in the study of physics. Uh, we know that the correlated equilibrium is bounded in a convex hull. Hence, the payoff vector from both players will have a monotoniously increasing prob prob probability in a different direction. And we will be able to estimate the op opponent's payoff vector by solving the, co the convex function. For easier vis visualization, we will reorder the variable in 
ascending order according to the main player's payoff vector. In this case, payoff, uh, in this case player one is the main player. Once we reorder them, we further move the first element in V to bar to the end of the vector. The setup will look like the example here, uh, where the capital P is the final state, which, which is the correlated equilibrium probability distribution, and capital D is the decision set. We first consider the outgoing net force on a decision set. Here we take the decision set capital D3 bar, for example. In the player one's point of view, he's or her, uh, he or she has an outgoing force from capital D3 bar to capital D4 bar. Since player two is against to player one, player two will have a force pulling capital D3, uh, capital D3 bar to capital D2 bar. By subtracting the both force, we get the net force. On the other hand, the probability distribution can be considered as their preference on each distribution, uh, each decision set. And we have to know that the decision set is the same for both players, which means the preference they have on a decision set is the same. Therefore, in our case, if probability row four is larger than row three and two, this means the net force should be greater or equal to zero, since they both want to move to capital D4 bar. But due to the nature of an enemy, player two has to put some force in the opponent uh, opposite direction. Next, if row three is greater or equal to other two, then the net force should be equal to zero. Otherwise, the net force will be less or equal to zero. This with this property, we can list out some of the constraints for the objective function we're going to solve later. Similarly to the outgoing net force, the incoming net force adopt the same idea. However, since we are, uh, we are in player po one's point of view, the condition regarding the sign of the net force changed to the another direction. With this property, we also can list out some of the constraints for the objective function. Now we will be solving this objective function to estimate the opponent's payoff vector. The idea is to maximize opponent's utility, which is what the opponent's trying to do when interacting with their environment. The constraint has to first fulfill the co correlated equilibrium definition. Next are the constraints we list out with the idea of the net force. And the last two is the constraint we list out in the system model. By solving this problem, we can get the estimate payoff vector of the other player. In the multiplayer case, where we have three players case, the player can choose, uh, player one can choose up or down, and player two can choose left or right where player three can choose which metrics to play and assuming we know player one's payoff vector. With a correlated, a correlated strategy, we can let player one and player two to play metrics one. Then let player one and player three to play metrics one. And same thing for metrics two, where uh, one and two player play and one and three play. At this point, we can see that we have, we have estimated all the players' payoff vector, but we never let player two and three interact with each other. However, we can still determine the behavior since, uh, since we already know their payoff vectors. In multiplayer game, we can reduce the number of interaction between players and still be able to achieve an correlated equilibrium. Here we show the reward of each player received in each round. And in each apple, we update the network and repeat the process. We can see that in the beginning, both players didn't do well. However, they are both slowly increasing their rewards. Around apple 80, they start to split. 
we can see that player two is dragging player one to the probability distribution that benefits player two. However, around app hold 130, player one start to realize this, realize this and try to fight back. Around Epoch 160, they have reached an equilibrium that they both set, are set, satisfied with. Although we did simulate more than 500 Epochs, but the result is stable since Epoch 130. So we only show the result up to Epoch uh, 300. Here we show the reward received in each action in one of the round in, diff in different epochs where the left figure is for player one and the right figure is for player two. From here, we can see that as more training they have, the faster they move to a higher reward. Here we combine their reward into a 2D figure we can see that at the beginning, they both gain small reward since they ha haven't discovered the environment enough. And even though they, the player one was dragged by player two during the training, at the end, they reach an equilibrium. In this work, we successfully link game theory with machine learning by overcome the challenges in the correlated equilibrium solution concept. With our proposed policy-based deep reinforcement learning model, the player are able to learn their opponent's behavior during their interaction. We then estimate the pay player's payoff factor instead of characterizing the strategies of action with given state. By knowing the payoff vector in the in the case of changing scenario in the game, we will know how other players will behave without interaction with the, them again. Next, we'll be discussing how we can come, uh, can, how we can solve the resource allocation problem through the matching game and machine learning technique. In the social media networks, users will always be sharing and requesting data within a network. In order for the system to work, network resources play a big role. And within the network, the highest priority is fulfilled user's demand by efficiently allocating re resource among the network. The objective in the network is to maximize the social welfare by maximizing the total received information value for each cache entity during a certain communication period, which is defined here. While maximizing the social welfare, the system has to ma maintain certain constraints. The first one is that the data stored in the cache entity cannot exceed its limits. Next is that there is a minimum requirement on the signal to ratio to noise ratio for each cache entity. And the last one is just saying that it is pointless to transmit the data from one cache entity to itself. To overcome this problem, we can use matching algorithm to match the data to the right cache entity. Here we use Iron's stable fixture matching algorithm, which proposed by Dr. Yunnan Guo, a former PhD student in Dr. Hans group. The ISF matching algorithm is a many-to-many -many matching algorithm, which based on the preference list of each player. In our case, a player's preference on the, uh, the player's preference on the data is calculated as shown here. It is, depends on the communication period, the transmission rate, and the total information value. However, there is a problem in this calculation regarding the information value uh, variable. For example, let's assume our data is the post regarding the 2016 presidential election. In the past, the only information we get from the data is information like the size of the data, the type, or some keywords. In the traditional way, the information value will only calculate based on this information. In, 
in the past, we might think the data that has larger size might contain more useful information in it, and we will cache that data. However, the user might not care about the contents of the data at all. Let's go back to the previous day, step. In this step, if we can know what the user really want and also understand what's inside the data, then we can match the right data to the right cache entity. In order, in order to overcome this challenge, we propose a machine learning model to the system. In our proposed method, we will, we will classify the data into two different categories. In the classification process, our data is filtered is the filtered uh, Twitter post where we filled out some useless strings or characters in a post such as URL. Next, we convert the word to vector. We then feed into our deep learning model and adopt the long short term memory architecture. The output is a scalar value between zero and one. When uh, where if the value is between 0 and 0 0.5, the data is said to have a negative sentiment, otherwise it has a positive sentiment. We compare with, with our classifier uh, with other classifier during the simulation. From figure one, we can see that our proposed method has the highest accuracy on determining the sentence sentiments. In figure two, the data we use is the Twitter post during the 2016 US presidential election that are related to Trump and Clinton. We can see that during that time, most of the posts regarding Trump has a negative sent sentiment. In figure three, we show the average device performance in the system. When the number of user device increase, our proposed method has the highest throughput compared to the other method. In figure four, we can see that the per, pro, uh, performance maintains the best when the number of user device increases. In this work, we have successfully solved the resource allocation problem through the matching game with machine learning technique. And we also illustrate the problem using Twitter posts from the from 2016 US presidential election. Next, I will be discussing how we apply machine learning technique into uh, uh, with human interactive learning to solve the first arrival picking problem in the oil and gas industry. In oil and gas industry, the purpose of performing the first arrival picking is to determine the sea level, level uh, sea floor and under uh, the and, and the underground structure for the for the drill, we can see from the top of the figure of two figure that company will place geo sensor on the ocean and strike a shock wave down to the ocean. When the signal bounces back to the geo sensor in different time frame, they will have data look like the two figure below. After performing the first arrival picking, the red lines is the first arrival curve. The first arrival picking process is very time consuming since it has to go over many processes and require experts to manually look at the data one by one. If we can find a way to bypass all of this complicated process and get the first arrival curve directly from the raw data, we can highly reduce the human labors and the processing time. Here, we propose a deep semi-supervised learning model to achieve the goal that we mentioned in the previous slide. Our proposed model will first extract the feature from the input data and reconstruct it back to the original input data. This, is, this part is the unsupervised learning part. This will ensure that the extract feature is important. Then we use, the, uh, we use this feature to perform image segmentation and the boundary between each object in the image will be the first arrival curve. We also adopt human, interact, uh, human in the loop technique 
where it helps to reduce the training time and prevent overfitting uh, during the training. We also adopt the transfer learning technique, which will also reduce the training time on a new data set. Here we can see that our proposed method has higher accuracy on the far off side of the first rival picking compared to the method that only has supervised learning technique. In this work, we successfully adopt machine learning into industrial application where we highly reduce the first rival picking process and increase the labeling accuracy and consistency. Next, I will be discussing some potential future works. The first potential future work direction is applying uh, game theory into machine learning algorithm. Similarly to GAN, but, mod but uh, multiple network might be able to cooperate with each other in a way that each network can also achieve its own goal. The next one is, uh, is in the economy. As we know, economy is built up by different companies. If we can analyze the relationship between them by using game theory with machine learning, and we might, then we might able to study the things like the cost of, the, of stock pricing. The next is the UAV. UAV is originally developed for military applications. This means there will be situations where one UAV is being chased by another. The UAV might be able to de determine the behavior of the other UAV and predict the step that the other UAV is going to take. Moreover, in, this, in the case of multiple UAV being chased by one UAV, the group of UAVs could cooperate with each other to confuse the, 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 to confuse a, the op opponent. Finally, in the vehicular network, we might be able to determine a better way to transmit data using both scan theory and machine learning. This could accelerate the real-time support in the network. Uh, this slide shows my uh, publication during my PhD study. In conclusion, the first word in this dissertation shows that we have successfully linked machine learning with scan theory, where we overcome the challenge in the correlated equilibrium solution concept by learning the opponent be opponent's behavior. Instead, char characterizing the strategy of an action, we estimate the opponent's payoff. In the second work, we solve the resource allocation problem by using the matching GAN with the help of machine learning technique and maximize the social welfare in the network. We also bring the machine learning technique into the oil and gas industrial application where we adopt the human interactive learning technique to accelerate the learning process. At the end, we also discuss some of, uh, we, yeah, we also discuss some of the potential future work directions. And this is, uh, thank you for your listen, and please let me know if you have any comments or questions. Okay, uh, thanks for the presentation. And uh, uh, any question from the audience and also from this uh, 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 from, from the committee? And uh, you know that okay, it's surprise that okay, you have several audience. <laughs> 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 it's a very surprise. Okay, so any question? So what's the relationship between the machine learning work and the, the part after that? And I, I didn't get the link. At least you saw, you try to solve some game theory, um, the, the first part, the game theory part. Right, I mean, so. It, what's the link between that and the part that you presented after that? Uh, okay, so the first one is saying that uh, in, in game theory, the, uh, especially in the correlated equilibrium solution concept, there's a problem in the real world that we cannot share, a uh, player will not share information with each other. And uh, yeah, showing this slide. So, uh, however, the concept is correct. It's nothing wrong with the concept, but it's not able to achieve in real life. So, in in order to overcome this, we propose the 
machine learning method to learn the, the information that is not private or is not important enough for the other players. And from that, we learned their behavior and we were able to adopt the correlated equilibrium solution concept in the real world problem. And the- so did, you, did you apply this? I didn't see like, did you apply this to the application you show later, like in the semi uh, imaging and in other applications? Uh, we have not. Being, because uh, uh, the the result you show is sim like the the result you show is from simulation, right? Right, right. Uh, so you. So mean, that's that's what I'm asking. Like, what's the connection between this part and the part after that? You mean this work and the next work? Yeah, the next one. Well, uh, for this part, we first uh, study how how we can use machine learning inside a game theory. To solve the problem, but the next part is saying that uh, we can actually use uh, game theory, like matching game, in the real world problem. So later on, we can adopt more complicated uh, theories in game theory into other problem to have a better, um, better result. Actually, it's kind of a, a follow up to that. Right. right. Um, there might be a better, um, I, mean, I mean, so you're, you're working with the oil and gas stuff because this is data that, you know, you, you have, um, or at least people on your committee have expertise in. Um, but a, an example of how you would apply this to a machine learning problem um, that seems more intuitive to me um, is the financial market thing. So can you kind of just sort of summarize how you would apply it. Like what would be your, your input and, and um, you know, how would you parcel stuff out for doing the financial market stuff? I mean, I'm assuming like newspaper clippings or like what, um, can you sort of give an overview of how you would apply this to that? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> um, I think your question is to apply into a economy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so um, we know that like, if you want to study stock, which is a mystery, <laughs> that this pricing is actually determined on some of the event that maybe some of the company, uh, maybe some of the company do something and then uh, the price will rise or uh, will drop. And we can study why at this point the company wants to do this and and in the future, if this kind of uh, re relevant event happen, we can know what this company will behave, and we can predict. What we well, we wish we can predict what the stock price will go. But but like the extra data that you would be using would be things like you know the text. Uh, I mean, oh, I, um, I, I I mentioned the text because you've got like a Twitter example, but um, you know news stories, things like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, basically, like now is a big data, like word, right? So any any data could be applied into it. I read that's a like future direction that I haven't really explored. In. So yeah, uh, no, I just... if I study more, then I will know like what type of uh, data is most relevant to this kind of uh, situation, and we'll be using those data to uh, for the process. Yeah, it just seemed like more of an intuitive example because I, well, I mean, I, it, it's probably just me, but I have no experience in the in the oil and gas field. But Did you lose a lot of money on stock market recently, David? Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's on your on your mind now. Huh? <laughs> uh, let me add a little bit, okay. And uh, I think the second work for the Twitter is the first uh, uh, first work. You can see that, okay. That's the 2016 presidential election when Kevin just came here. That is the first work. And the second work is the oil and, oil and gas man, which is basically supporting uh, his PhD study. So we have to acknowledge. And the first work is a work we just have done 10 days ago. So that's a... <laughs> <laughs> That, 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 that's the fundamental. You put in your, how come you put in your defense? 
Ten days ago, we just submitted the paper. <laughs> so basically, that that is plain the reason. <laughs> I mean, so um, okay. So in terms of the game theory, uh, in fact, I'm very interested in this direction. Um, so, like in terms of the non co uh, you know cooperative game theory, for example, mm -hmm. like what what's your um, take on that? Like how how can you modify this? Framework to uh, to accommodate those and, and multiple players, not just two players. Mm -hmm. There may be multiple players in cooperative game theory. Uh, one very important application is you know like um, you know, army of uh, agents, right? Learn to cooperate and solve a certain task. So so what was the? Uh, I think in Google there's a researcher doing this. Uh, combining deep learning and game theory, I think I sent to Zoom already. Mm. Uh, so what what's what's how difficult? I mean, how difficult it is to to make these uh, training work properly with reinforcement uh, learning? Have you have you did you have, uh, try anything like that, or you have any experience in this direction? I mean, let's say you have uh, more than two players mm -hmm. and in a cooperative game, right? Mm -hmm. And normally, cooperative game is is harder to train. I think yeah. uh, because it can can uh, can be pretty, um, you know, it can can get a, a, a bad solution you know, mm -hmm. when you train reinforcement learning. So, what what's your take on this, basically? Right. So, uh, from just uh, without changing the structure of the neural networks. We might be able to uh, have our hands on the, let's say, the output data, right? So probably in the uh, supervised learning, we could change the output data in a way that the that is in game theory that might be cor correlated to each other, and then they will. Uh, th then they will be able to train the network uh, according to what data they provide to them. But if we are able to adopt some of the uh, algorithm into each layer to calculate uh, to calculate some of the mechanics in there, then that probably can I don't know, uh, make a better uh, faster conver convergence or yeah uh, something like that uh, I haven't really explored it but like in GAN it basically depends on the output of the generative network and the discriminator right and Kevin please uh, also answer this question by, the, uh, by this uh, last contribution of our paper and uh, what's the difference between the why why we don't use a traditional machine learning to do such kind of thing? Why we want to do this kind of uh, through the game theory to analyze this one? Maybe you can answer from this perspective. Uh, you mean the sorry? Uh, what's the <laughs> what's the question again? Like, yeah, well, what what's the question? What's the difference between this kind of uh, I mean the one that the century I mean that the the, the, the Google have done? And many kind of things work on this one, and what we have done. Okay, and there are two differences. The first difference is that okay, they are working on a non non cooperative game. They are working on the specific quality equation in the game, which consider the drawn distribution. And this is the first one, and easy. The second one, I want you to answer. Okay, what's the difference? I mean, the second one is why we don't just use a Q learning. I mean, just use the deep deep learning to do this type of thing. Why we want to use a game? That is the last contribution that we discussed. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, so instead, like Q learning, instead of like characterizing the action into different char categories, and we actually estimate the payoff of the player's vector. So this means that if scenario changes, we don't have to let them interact with each other again, or when when like the the starting points, the, they 
they that each, each player have, we don't have to go over the interaction. We can just use the payoff vector we get to calculate what's the the equilibrium in that game. That, yeah, you, you, you answer right, but uh, let me further explain a little bit. Okay, for this, for example, if I interact with Kevin by using the Q learning, then if you do this thing, and then I need to use the training sequence to determine, okay, under this condition, he will do that one, under that condition, I will do that one. And when we change to another thing, I have to do a similar thing. So basically, with the different things, we do the different kind of cluster. Under different condition, I do the different reaction. However, by using this game theory, I started this uh, value function of Kaida. So I know that what he is the value most and what is a value different thing with the different values. And then if I know this value function, the next time I have the interaction with him, I don't need to calculate user Q learning. I just need to calculate. I know that, okay, we value research very much and then I trust him. <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay. Okay, Hin, did, did, did we answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think part of that, um, I, I don't fully understand the the framework or your contribution. I have to read a little bit more because, I mean, my, I have the same question. What's the difference between this and and uh, methods like from the Google guy I sent to you? Mm -hmm. You know, and also he's also similar things. Like he proposed a differential, uh, different differentiable game, uh, uh, connect with the deep network so they can train using gradient descent and on sort of things. Um, so, so yeah, I, I need to dig a little deeper. I really don't understand fully the contribution, but this is very interesting direction. Do you have other uh, members of your group doing this uh, topic of research? Uh, so uh, far, no. No, <laughs> <laughs> okay. no protege? No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, there are a few guys want to do this kind of, uh, I mean, uh, there, no, I think, uh, there's a guy doing, trying to do this uh, deep learning with a mean field game. With a mean field game. And that student is just, uh, I mean, it's a first year student. So I think, uh, yeah, I think he, he, he still needs to get some training. So probably in the last, uh, last journal, he said, I mean, there will be some kind of uh, relatively higher quality one. You know, that the first one, second one, <laughs> some, sometimes, okay, it's just, uh, to get a student trained, typically the last one will get some kind of a real meaningful one. Yeah. Any other question from the committee? Any, any question? Hey. Uh, hi, um, hi Zhu. Uh, hi. This is Denise Gurkha, and I'm not in the committee. Can I ask a tiny question? Uh, no problem. I mean, you, you, you are, uh, we are very happy to have an audience. We are really happy. Yeah. <laughs> it sounded very interesting. <laughs> and uh, and it, uh, thank you. The presentation was great, too. Just a, a tiny clarification, if I understood this correctly. Um, there is an expert knowledge that you added into uh, the roles that uh, each party play in that game theory side of your work i'm i'm presuming because otherwise they cannot be random players with uh whatever game that they have right you didn't like guess them or randomize them you actually put some expert knowledge into what their game can be right uh, right so that is that right like, can you elaborate on how is that uh, going to apply? For example, this future works has so many different applications, right? Mm -hmm. how, can you elaborate like briefly in a high level, like how would an expert knowledge come in and put those roles into the, uh, uh, the opposing parties? <laughs> yeah, so, well. um, yeah, so the prior knowledge is actually what, we can get without knowing uh, a lot of information that in, in my case is to know the natural equilibrium, which is very simple to, to get. And without knowing the uh, opponent's payoff 
vector. And this, this knowledge, knowledge will ensure that uh, if there is multiple Nash equilibrium, then their payoff uh, vector must be monotonous increasing in other direction as the main player. And with this property, we are able to solve the convex function. And to get the, and this is why we can, we can solve this uh, objective function to get the payoff factor of the other players. I see. So then does that mean there is a pre-work on getting that opposing uh, interests in place in your system? No? Because how can you, like, on spot know exactly what they're... Uh, I think I'm looking for a more empirical <laughs> information from you. Like, for example, you took that uh, image processing example for the oil exploration, right? Like, how did you assign the opposing interest to the parties there? Could you repeat again? <laughs> You had an example on how your machine learning with mm -hmm. game theory uh, did a spot on uh, picking of the salt uh, boundary on that image. Did I miss it? Uh, in that work, we, we did not imply, we did not like very focus on applying Game theory into it. However, is in that in that work we are showing that we are able to adopt the machine learning technique into a real world problem. With a human human kind of in the loop. Right. Yeah, I think uh, his uh, her question okay is uh, related to the third one. For the third one, okay, with the human in the loop, okay, we can we can introduce the human bar information into this kind of machine learning. So that is basically the third, uh, the third, third work. For the first work, okay, we don't need to apply information for that. Instead, okay, when I learn, when I learn, I'm just just like a, I mean, typically between any two people try to cooperate each other. When I learn something, when I try to cooperate with something, when I interact with you, I'm not only consider my own kind of uh, benefit. I also consider the joint distribution or in other the joint benefit. So in other words, if I want to play with you, okay, I will give you the benefit so that, okay, we have mutual benefit. Everybody will work, we all be happy together. Then we play together. This is a key role of a correlated equilibrium. And the machine learning here to provide a tool such as, okay, even without foreign information, but by by intuitive playing, I, I, I understand what is your value function. And then, then we can, in the, after I learn this one, I can provide, I can easily calculate without machine learning, calculate what is this kind of a contract that the, or we, can, we two can work together such that everybody helps. So that is a story. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Kevin already answered the question, but I want to. Yes, kind of, uh, thank you. Kind of make, thank you. Make, I get around, but thanks a lot. Uh, good yeah, luck with everything. Thank you. Yeah, because it's a. Uh, this, uh, this recording I want to put on the YouTube. I want everybody to understand what we are doing, okay? <laughs> so I try to use, interpret it into a very down to the earth kind of a question. Yeah, answer, okay. So any other question? Okay. Yeah, I have a comment, so it's kind of like a, a follow up uh, related to this, uh, the third application that Kevin did. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the third one is about this uh, first arrow picking, right? Yes. Yeah, if I remember correctly. So yeah, that's uh, because Kevin did that uh, together with us, me and Xu Qin. I mean, uh, Kevin did a good job and we, we liked his results and also have a very nice publication. Yes. But somehow from the structure of your uh, presentation or your thesis, this one sounds a little bit disconnected with your title or the other two. So maybe somehow you need to I mean, tune this a little bit to make it more consistent with each other. Okay, thank you. I, I will go back to look at this one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think that is a funding. That's a whole company. Yeah, we, we, we really have <laughs> Yeah, that's a very good question. We, we debated for a long time. Yeah.
<laughs> and finally, you think about the human as another player. So I think it's still okay. <laughs> human play with a game with a kind of machine. So, okay. yeah. So, any other question? Okay, if not, Kevin, can you, can you hand back uh, me to the host? Yes. Uh, okay. Let me... Uh, so I will stop recording right now, or just okay. Uh, no, you you can stop recording now. Okay. Give me one minute.